Most people think Danish ancestry is simple, but the data shows something very different. Recent genetic studies give a clearer picture of how Denmark formed over thousands of years, and the results challenge some common assumptions. Many people imagine one shared Danish identity with a single origin, but the evidence shows a long history of movement, mixing, and regional differences. This video explores what scientists have discovered about Danish ancestry and how different groups shaped the population over time. We will look at both ancient and recent influences to understand the full picture. To understand Denmark today, we first need to examine an unexpected cross-border connection. One of Denmark's closest genetic relationships isn't with Scandinavia. It's with someone right across the border. For thousands of years, people moved freely between Jutland and northern Germany, long before modern borders existed. Archaeological finds and genetic studies show clear signs of shared ancestry in this region, reflecting families, traders, and farming communities who lived on both sides of the peninsula. This connection does not mean Danes and Germans are the same. It simply shows that populations in this border area developed through long-term interaction rather than isolation. Understanding this shared history helps set the stage for deeper patterns within Denmark. But internal differences inside Denmark are even more revealing. Denmark may look small on a map, but its regions tell different genetic stories. People in Jutland show a more stable ancient Scandinavian signal, shaped by long-term continuity and fewer major population changes. The islands, however, reflect higher mobility because they sat along active Baltic trade routes. Merchants, travelers, and workers moved through these areas more often, which gradually increased genetic variation. Coastal access made interaction easier, so the islands collected more outside influences than inland regions. These differences are not dramatic, but scientists can measure them clearly in genetic data. These island patterns point toward a broader Baltic connection that often surprises viewers. Some of Denmark's genetic traces come from groups most people don't associate with Scandinavia. Over many centuries, Baltic and Slavic communities reached Danish regions through trade, settlement, and other interactions around the Baltic Sea. These contacts left small but consistent genetic signals that appear in modern studies. The influence is more visible in areas like Copenhagen, which historically participated in major Baltic networks and attracted people from nearby coasts. These contributions add diversity, but do not replace or redefine the country's core ancestry. They simply reflect Denmark's long involvement in regional exchange. Yet Denmark differs from its Scandinavian neighbors in one important ancestral layer. A key feature of Scandinavian ancestry is missing almost entirely from Denmark. In northern Sweden and Norway, many communities carry traces of Sami ancestry, reflecting the long history of the Sami people in Arctic and subarctic regions. Denmark does not show this same ancestral layer because its geography and early settlement routes were oriented southward, not toward the far north. As a result, Denmark's population developed through connections with Central Europe and the Baltic, rather than through Arctic pathways. This difference helps explain why Danish genetic patterns stand apart from those of its northern neighbors. To see the full story, we need to go far deeper, long before Scandinavia existed. The first people in Denmark looked nothing like today's population, and their world looked nothing like modern Denmark. After the Ice Age, small groups of hunter-gatherers entered the area and formed the earliest known communities. Around 6,000 years ago, early farmers from Southeast Europe reached the region with new crops and technologies. Their arrival led to a major genetic turnover as farming groups gradually replaced most of the older hunter-gatherer lineages. This shift created the first large and lasting foundation of ancestry in Denmark. These early layers shaped population structure for generations. But another migration, far larger and more transformative, 
was still to come. A single migration reshaped Europe so dramatically that its impact is still visible in Danes today. Steppe pastoralists, often linked to Yamnaya-related groups, moved into Europe and reached the regions that later influenced Denmark. They brought new burial practices, metalworking skills, and early forms of Indo-European languages. Their arrival caused another major genetic shift, blending with earlier farmers and remaining hunter-gatherer lines. These combined layers formed the base of early Northern European identity and set the groundwork for later cultural development in the region. This ancestry remains strong in Denmark today. Centuries later, another cultural era arrived, but it wasn't as genetically uniform as people assume. Genetic studies reveal that not all Vikings were Scandinavian. Research on Viking age remains shows that some individuals in Viking crews carried British, Baltic, and other European ancestries. This supports the idea that being a Viking was based on joining a lifestyle and network rather than belonging to one genetic group. People became part of Viking communities through travel, work, and shared activities. Many outsiders settled in Danish regions through trade, marriage, and craft exchange, contributing to slow and steady population change. These everyday connections influenced ancestry far more than raids or battles. These patterns continued into Denmark's regional histories in distinct ways. Different Danish regions preserve different chapters of the country's genetic past. Bornholm shows slightly higher Baltic signals because of its long history of contact across the sea. South, Jutland reflects long-term continuity with northern Germany, shaped by centuries of movement along the border. Copenhagen displays the greatest diversity, as cities historically attracted migrants from many European regions. Northern Jutland, in contrast, maintains a strong ancient Scandinavian continuity with fewer outside influences. These regional patterns demonstrate how geography and local history shaped different parts of the population. And this brings us to the most recent chapter, one that continues shaping Denmark right now. The newest layer of Danish DNA is the one forming in real time. Since the mid-20th century, Denmark has received immigrants from many regions, including Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and South Asia. These movements increased diversity, especially in urban areas where new communities tend to settle. Although recent immigration is more visible, it follows the same long-term pattern of population change seen throughout Danish history. Movement, exchange, and integration have always shaped the country. Despite new layers, Denmark's core identity remains stable and built on centuries of blended ancestry.